me now to cross the galaxy. This is where conspiracy on the wild side meets the perspective of a lifetime. This is the Free Zone with your host, Freeman. Hello and welcome to the Free Zone. It is wonderful to be here with you in this amazing time. Could we call it historic? Are we living in historical times? Is there ever a time that's not historic? I feel that we are involved in something amazing right now, uh, what they have been repeatedly calling this peaceful transfer of power. And we're going to discuss this deep tonight with Randy Moggins of Off Planet Radio. And before we get to Randy, I, I, we're going we're gonna to discuss colliding with the reality matrix. I wanted to give a little heads up. I've been getting a lot of questions on how the hell do I manage FreemanTV.com. And so I thought I'd take just a quick moment to, to give a little explanation of how you can get through my work chronologically and find everything. So uh, head over to FreemanTV.com and you've got your face uh, plant there, uh, the first page. I, I may delete that page. All right, I'm trying to make everything so much faster on it and so much better that I work on FreemanTV.com like crazy, more than you guys probably could ever imagine. Uh, so the way that the system runs is I started with the Freeman perspective. And in those very first television shows, I tried to give you the – gist of everything that I had in my mind. So the first documentaries that I crafted, the TV shows for the Freeman Perspective, really encompass everything that you're going to see on this program. And that was, of course, 12 years ago. Uh, so the Freeman Perspective, you go over to freemantv.com, go over, watch, check out the Freeman Perspective. About a ways down, when I get to Anna, Nicole, Brittany, and Mind Control, is about the time that I was offered a podcast and Radio Freeman was born. So there you start mingling in the podcast. And so you've got the TV show going and the podcast going. But I'm also doing other people's programs, like a wonderful show of Randy Moggins on Off Planet Radio. I'm on, well, I was on Howard Stern last week. So if you want to check out stuff like that that's all in freeman's appearances so then you mingle those in so now you've got the freeman perspective going with radio freeman or the free zone is is where you will find all the radio shows you go all the way to the bottom of that list and start from there and work your way back up now you're going to want to do this because it really is going to help solidify all the information that you're getting because it's a build-up uh, that has started 12 years ago and has continued on to this very day with something new coming out every week for the last 12 years so yes it's thick in there so as you're watching the Freeman Perspective, getting a little bit of the free zone, mingling in the guest appearances, I'm also giving lectures. So then you want to throw those in the mix to get the deeper knowledge, to get farther into the topics and to really learn. Meanwhile, I'm collecting the weirdest videos that ever appear on the Internet, you know, Sandy Hook and all the weirdness. You can even see the Pope hanging out with half-naked gymnasts, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, you know, Dan Aykroyd talking about men in black while he's talking to Britney Spears and Britney Spears is talking about time travel. So this is the kind of stuff you find in weird videos, and these are all database. Then you've got the read section where you get all of the exclusive articles that really dig deep into what all this esoterica and occult knowledge means. You'll also find the Space War News, which I find is going to be very important in our near future as you learn about mysterious fireballs calling, causing earthquakes and uh, sonic booms. And, uh, you know, I've tracked this stuff for a decade now. It's all there for you, database, ready for you to understand. So that is FreemanTV.com in a nutshell. It's thick, and it will take you time. It took me 12 years to build it. So, uh, yeah, I say go back to the beginning, start with the Freeman perspective, and work your way through. And you really will gain knowledge that you will not get anywhere else because this show is unique, and it's based off of uh, unique knowledge of so many collected minds and an amazing uh exclusive interviews that you will get nowhere else so uh on another note of that uh, this would be the month if you were going to subscribe this year honestly is the year to subscribe i have the best guest list coming your way i'm so excited about oh man there's people that i've been trying to get for years that are coming on so right now is a great time to subscribe to freemantv.com because i'm trying to get a television studio 
it is quite possible that I'll be picking up my whole system here and moving to one of the largest cable networks in North Florida, reaching as far as Georgia and going out further and, of course, sticking to the Internet as well. But if you want to see me on television, then subscribe to freemantv.com. Seven bucks, you know, forego the latte one week and uh, get a month's worth of information that you'll not get anywhere else. And if I could just get a number of you right now uh, throughout this year to really jump in and just a single month uh, uh, from a bunch of you actually makes a huge difference. And I may be able to propel this into a whole new spectrum. And so if you ever wanted to subscribe to FreemanTV.com, now is the time. It really, uh, you know, what's seven bucks? It's, it's, you know, it's, it's a bottle of water at the movie theater. <laughs> I mean, seriously. So, uh, now is the time. So I, I mentioned to you guys that I was recently on Howard Stern. And Randy, I'm going to talk to you about this a little bit as we go. And we'll start mingling in to our, our topics of the evening. But uh, I, I do like to make bold appearances like this. And when it was asked whether or not we should have... Howard Stern or one of his representatives come to the Free Your Mind conference and interviews the speakers, I I said absolutely. You know, I told Bob Tuscan, yes, absolutely do it. And if you need to, stick me in front of them because I can take it. And so they did. <laughs> and uh, I did steal the show. I really did. And, and people are angry about the ignorance of Howard and Robin as they ponder the existence of Akhenaten and wonder whether Disney and politics actually go hand in hand. And me, I'm listening to them berate me, and I am cheering because they rang a bell every time I said Akhenaten. Howard Stern made a huge deal about and I did this on purpose. I mean, when I went before Wolfie and got interviewed, I meant to say Akhenaten as many times as I'm saying it now. <laughs> and uh, and I, I got them to ring a bell, talk about Akhenaten, talk about Freemasonry, talk about the connections between Disney and politics, and all live on the, this dumbass show, you know? Uh, and yeah, people got angry about their ignorance but recognize how much we have impacted the consciousness of people with uh, a, a display like this so randy what do you say about busting into the consciousness of the common mind i said go for it man that's awesome um actually that kind of fulfills expectations i've had for a long time we're now seeing the dumping of major media and you know it's it's interesting because what happened in Trump's press conference last week when he told CNN they had, were a terrible network, they were fake news, fake and news. wouldn't let them ask questions. And you go, okay, now, wait a minute. Um, this is the future, once in future president. He's going to be president, you know, any minute now. And he's basically calling out major networks and telling them, you suck. Yes, it was epic. I mean, this whole thing has been epic, Randy. I'm, I, I'm blown away by the rape victims being brought up and, and brought to the debates. I'm, I'm blown away by this constant use of the peaceful transfer of power, how many times they've said that. And I'm blown away that somebody could go and light themselves on fire and say, I'm opposed to Trump but I'm not for anything and then flub it. Uh, so it, yeah. And, and, and even Trump had YouTube celebrities in his inaugural concert today. So yes, we are breaking through that barrier. No, this is the real media. What we've been doing is basically we created the penetration point to push through the wall that's existed. The, uh, the major mainstream media has failed at their mission for 50 years now, probably longer than that. They've been co-opted by intelligence agencies. They have delivered the propaganda that was necessary to keep the uh, the, the 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 collective aligned with the uh, the government agendas and and the intelligence agency agendas. And and now, uh, because of the penetration of alternative media, which it, you know, alternative media right now has its own problems, but. I'm willing to let most of that slide right now in favor of seeing something that that takes down CNN, MSNBC, Fox, and, and all these other uh, alphabet um, networks. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. <laughs> they 
are crazy, and they they we see how they just keep using these same phrases. Like I'm, I'm bringing up the peaceful transfer of power, and how they repeat these things over and over again. We know that there's all the coalition that, that forms these media networks, and it's amazing to watch Trump just like shut them down. It's it's a crazy. I mean, it, it really does seem like we have flipped our script and walked into an alternate dimension there. Uh, what does that even mean, peaceful transfer? Is there an alternative to that that we haven't heard about? I mean, what, is Barry Sotero going to strap on six guns and walk out onto uh, Pennsylvania Avenue and do a showdown? Well, you know, what's he going to have, a gang of trannies behind him? I don't know. But I, it, it, they keep acting like they're still in power. They're not in power. Yeah, even John Voight the actor and father of Angelina Jolie got up at this inaugural concert uh, the day before the inauguration and, and mentioned the propaganda. I mean, he, he started the whole thing with a fight and said, look, you know, they, they spread all these lies and hate about Trump through this fake news propaganda. And that's how they started this inauguration. But <laughs> what really got me was when uh, Donald Trump walked down from the Lincoln Memorial he had keyed up the Rolling Stones, and before he appeared in front of the Lincoln statue, they were playing, you can't always get what you want. <laughs> and once that was done, <clears throat> it went on to the song Heart of Stone, and it opens with, known so many girls made them all cry. <laughs> and here comes Trump and Melania. <laughs> Walking down uh, to the Rolling Stones playing a, a, a heart of stone and, and singing about how many hearts they had broken and how many women they had known. Uh, yeah, this is a new day, man. This is a new day. Can we turn life to fun? Like, are we as as these, you know, y you and I take on a lot of crazy topics, a lot of heady conspiracy, a lot of... You know, oh, the whole world is now, obviously. I mean, all of the people listening in any way. But I completely lost where I was going with that. <laughs> Shoot. No, we can have fun. Yeah, that's, uh, that's fun. Exactly. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, see, see, it doesn't enter the mind anymore. Like, that's what I – I lost it completely because I was thinking of all the suffering, all the all the fight that we're in. Is there any place in this for us to have fun and to develop a life of fun? Well, I think the fun's going to be, look, uh, you know, I didn't support Trump. I don't vote. And the only thing that I was hoping and praying for was that, my God, we would not go Hillary Clinton. Now, having said that, you know, I made a few predictions. And one of them, this is, this is validating as well, because I, I have a Facebook post that I put out. And I said, well, at the very least, Trump is going to be so disruptive to government that it's not going to be able to function normally. And that's a good day anytime. And I stopped the other morning at the gas station, went in to grab a coffee. And there was the New York Post magazine and the headline on it is Trump disrupts government. And I thought, yes, there we go. Right. Yeah, we we tend to have the opposite reaction to the the mainstream. Uh, yeah, oh, you want to disrupt this process. The process needs to be disrupted. It needs to have a reboot. The American people need to feel disoriented for the first time because they've been comfortably numb for so long. And in the process of this, we start to create some new synaptic responses in people. When you begin to realize this this juggernaut that is our government sitting over top of us, I mean, Trump does kind of look like David versus Goliath in some respect. And again, I'm not idol-worshipping Donald Trump. The, you know, he's, he's opened the book now. He's going to have to fill the pages with his own legacy and what he does and the decisions he makes. Yeah, without a doubt, it's it's going to be something to watch. They were all shocked and awed about the idea that here was a man who has never sworn a single oath, uh, has never held an office, and everybody wanted him as president. And I was watching the CNN version of the inaugural concert just to see what they were saying. And that... They make it out like this is just crazy. Oh my God, I can't believe that this this guy has has risen to this position and 
Uh, and we're all like, yeah, let's do the reboot. I mean, even if we go back to Y2K, I was all like, yeah, hell yeah, let the, let the computer network shut down. Let all the the uh, debt go away. Or, um, But what do you think? Now, I watched this, The Man Who Lit Himself on Fire. And, you know, to have the conviction in your soul to be able to go sit down, pour gasoline over yourself and light it. Uh, you really have to have some serious conviction. This guy did not. He lit himself on fire and managed to get out of it uh, pretty much unscathed. And then when questioned as to why he would light himself on fire, he barely had an answer. Now, to me, it seemed like crisis actor. To me, it seemed like some dude who did not have the conviction to light himself on fire. He had this lame statement saying, well, uh, you know, this new president, he, he's not going to believe in the Constitution. And that was the reason he, he would light himself on fire. Got other men talking about cutting off their penises in, in, to disrupt this. So yeah, yeah, this I saw that. I saw civil that. war of like weird, weird identity politics. And where do you go with all this? You know, people lighting themselves. Up. What do you think about uh, this inauguration and, and how people are reacting? I mean, it's crazy. We haven't been in this place in so-called linear time history, history, there's, there's a topic, um, since 1960. And, um, you know, I don't really remember 1960, but I, you know, one of the best things we can do is talk to, to, to our elders. And I remember my parents and grandparents telling me, about the absolute screaming paranoia that a lot of Americans had over the election of John F. Kennedy, largely because he was Roman Catholic, and this um, the Protestant section of this nation feared that um, you know this was a Vatican takeover of the United States government. So there was a huge amount of paranoia about the Kennedys, while at the same time it was a disruptive election, and it was the election of. Um, a very charismatic leader, a very charismatic family, and, uh, a, you know, a, a period of about three years that are now recorded as being called Camelot in America. So, you know, the very fact that Trump is this disruptive, that he presents the type of image he does, and the fact that there is so much pants wetting and hand-wringing and angst over this man's rise to power, I find this historically interesting. I hope the parallels end with that aspect of it. But, you know, we have to we have to face facts. From the very time that Trump began to look viable and serious as a candidate, there have been people out there making very serious utterances about the fact that, that, that you know, his life is in danger. And I'll just, I'll, I'll leave it there because I don't want to incite that. You know, I hope the parallels end there because... Uh, I don't want to see America have to go through that again. If we can have it, it's possible that we get a peek behind the curtain and the beginning of somewhat of a renaissance in this, this country, at least getting back to the roots of who we are as a nation. And what you were talking about earlier with this, this identity politics, that's something that really we need to examine in our collective psyche and start to examine what the political process has delivered in terms of special interests and, and identity. Absolutely. Absolutely. And on the note of the, the numerous mentions of an assassination attempt, uh, there is a secret appointee appointed by Obama that is disallowed to go to the inauguration. And he like, uh, uh, uh Kiefer Sutherland would then suddenly be thrown into the position of president if something goes awry at the mm -hmm. inauguration. I guess at this point, folks, I should mention that we are recording this show prior to the inauguration on the day of the inaugural concert and preparing for tomorrow. So I wanted to make sure that Randy and I got this show going before the inauguration. So just let you know, this is all being recorded the day before the inauguration, and we're kind of going over what, you know, what's going on. And so this whole secret appointee that we have that's disallowed to go to the inauguration and taking on the Kiefer, Kiefer Sutherland uh, 
24 type role, yeah. Yeah, the archetype. Mm. Well, yeah. this was the other show I wish I'd written it down that he was just in where he's a lowly. Okay, uh, got it. And he's propelled into the presidency. I should have written down the name of that. But as strange as it would be, right after the inauguration on Fox, they are premiering 24 Legacy, the new version of 24. Mm. And we have all these media just building all of these identities. We got the stupid celebrities singing, I'll survive. We've got, uh, you know, for fun, honestly, uh, talking about the Kennedy uh Trump connections that hopefully don't go any further, but we have this idea that they did transfer and change the guard uh, before the route was picked, just like they did with Kennedy. And I, I, for fun and to be a part of this whole scenario, purchased a Trump coin, and I had to get this thing. It was a John F. Kennedy half dollar silver coin with Donald Trump's orange face in full color on the front. And then gold plated. Wow. <laughs> wow. I'm like, a gold plated silver coin with Trump's orange face. Give me that. It was 15 bucks at trumpcoin.com. Uh, not to give them any props or whatever, but if you guys are interested in one of those, I, I, I like, I got a sense of humor in those type of things. Uh, but yeah, so we're sitting at a point where they're talking about a Keith or Sutherland scenario where this un unannounced person appointed by Obama could be propelled into the presidency if tomorrow uh, people start yanking off their wieners and you know, <laughs> blowing themselves up or burning or, you know, whatever. You know, there, there may be valid reasons for um, – well, cutting off your penis, but the, the, the election of Trump wouldn't be that. I mean, I get – the whole transgender movement, and no disrespect to anybody in that that quarter, but you know, self immolation. Um, that's that's extreme. Um, a lot of this is a lot of this is theatrics, and and I've seen it on a personal level. I've seen it inside my own family. This is this is very sad to see the level of drama that people have resorted to. Since they lost the election, because they were stunned. I, I think anybody that watched the returns that came in on election night were stunned. I, I sat here and watched it myself. Emily and I'd recorded a show and finished up about 11 a.m. and I or 11 p.m. and, and I had uh, CNN returns on my other computer, and I became fixated on watching this. I was just watching the numbers. I didn't have the sound up. I wasn't looking at the info, babes. I was watching. What amounted to probably one of the greatest horse races I've ever seen in terms of how these numbers started to roll in and the shock and awe that occurred as we closed in on 1 a.m. in the morning when it became very apparent that, um, you know, Mrs. Clinton was never going to get close to the numbers she needed and that Trump had just, he had just closed the loop on this whole thing. It was almost like somebody pulled a switch. Do you think she was totally sauced at the end of that? <laughs> when she would, phoned in her concession, oh I, I think she was sauced. I got a feeling that she was throwing very large objects and that probably the yes. bodyguards were tying things down. I watched Alex Jones throughout that whole thing. Throughout the debates, I would have him off to the side listening to his crazy rant while watching it all unfold. And, uh, you know... I was blown away because I saw 18 years of psychological warfare that I had been discussing the ideas of ineligibility, the ideas of extramarital affairs, the ideas of uh, you know, conspiracy and, and corruption and all of these things that have were built throughout the last presidencies to bring down this this concept we call America, to bring Trump to say we need America great again. Uh I've been watching how they have destroyed the concept of America. We've never had a choice. We had what? We yeah. had Skull and Bones 1 and 2 as a choice. We had the head of the CIA as the president. I got to laugh every time I say that. <laughs> you know, and and we had no choice here either. It's 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 amazing thing to watch that the psychological warfare destroying everything putting putin uh, making america look like satan and putting putin up on a on a shiny stallion with his shirt off and then now clashing that whole russian america ideal together i i mean 
the Russians. <laughs> all right, so we're talking about Alex Jones at, 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 at different, but the Russians were promoting Alex Jones on their number one television show with all of Putin's uh, head advisors on the television show saying Alex Jones is a true American. He's what we expect of the real American. <laughs> yeah. Randy, yeah. have yeah. we, yeah. Have we yeah. are we colliding with the reality matrix? I mean, I'm not sure that I trust what I hear. I certainly, I don't even trust what I see anymore. And I don't watch mainstream media at all. I mean, it, it takes something extraordinary to get me to go and seek out a clip. But the level of deception that we have and the ability for people to be deceived by images and words that are broadcast over airwaves is now so thick that I'm I'm just skeptical of everything. I, sometimes I'm skeptical about what I say on my own shows. I've played my own shows back and went, <laughs> I really said that, didn't I? Because in the heat of the moment, you do say things sometimes. M my point being that uh, this is a giant electronic mashup. We're, we're in the digital age. All things, all things are possible. And the the convolution of data, information, media images, sound, all of this is designed to keep us in a state of constant spin and off balance. And the whole election cycle that began with the declaration of Trump as candidate was a media campaign from the onset. I sat in Boston, uh, Logan Airport in Boston last March. I had to fly up there for business. And I was with um, two people I work with, sitting in Logan for two hours, waiting for my delayed flight. And at one point, I'm watching the monitors, and I nudged my, my coworker, and I said, are you watching this? I said, look at this. I said, we've been sitting here for two hours. I said, I've been trying to ignore this, but you can't ignore the fact that Trump has a constant presence on the news networks. He was either on screen or there were tickers below with something Trump, somehow or another, through either manipulation or just pure savvy, Donald Trump managed to have wall-to-wall -wall media coverage from the time he declared until the time he was declared the winner on, on election night. That's, he ran, this was the most brilliant media campaign by any politician that we have seen, I would say, since probably the Kennedy campaign when, when Kennedy just kind of, you know, walked right over Richard Nixon with his five o'clock shadow in a debate. Yeah. Trump, he, he managed to do all of this for next to no money. Uh, you know, he is a smart businessman. He spent a small fraction of the, the, the money that Hillary did. And yet, they gave, he was donated ninety million dollars for this current inauguration, and uh, he, it's it's supposed to be quite a spectacle. He's got directors and producers of Hollywood all involved, and uh, it's going to be something else to see, starting at nine o'clock tomorrow morning Eastern time, and going throughout most of the afternoon. I I I want to keep tabs. I'm gonna. I I'm. I was actually almost there. Randy, I, I almost went. To I was this invited chaos. to go. I had a friend of mine. I had a friend of mine who's flying down from Canada. He's expatriated to Canada. He's flying into D.C. and he said, "I live in southern central Pennsylvania. I'm like within uh, an hour and twenty minutes driving of of D.C." And he's like, "Dude, you want to go?" And I'm like, "You couldn't get me near that city right now. I know the craziness that's going to be going on in that city tomorrow." Yeah, actress Sean Young invited me to go to the inauguration ball with her. And, I mean, for bragging rights, oh, man, That's I'll tell you. That's pretty good bragging rights. Yeah, I was, I, was, I was very tempted, but <laughs> at the same sane? time, I was asking her, are you sure? And uh, she decided, no, she didn't have it in her to, to get in the midst of all that and is going to the Sundance Festival instead. So... Yeah, no, I'm not. I've I've done my time standing in front of riot squads. I mean, when I was 96, 97, 1996 or seven, I don't remember. Uh, it was WTO IMF protest in Washington D.C., and five hundred thousand people had gathered to say they were opposed to the International Monetary Fund and the World Trade Organization. And the media that we got, 
I was there standing and yelling at the riot squads. Actually, that was my very first interview on indie media. And, you know, nothing, nothing comes of this. It's, it's pointless if you don't have the media in your pocket to, to give your explanation. All they said was 500,000 people disrupted life in, in Washington, D.C. Uh, we think they don't like the IMFWTO or something like that, but we arrested a bunch of them, so don't worry about it. And we, yeah, so I saw from that example that all of this type of major protest, if you don't have the the press behind you, then you're not going to get your message out. And we're battling the wrong battle. I think that we need to just like the, the, the rogue stallion, the maverick, and just start walking a new way, wouldn't you say? Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of the way I roll with all of this. Um, like I said, I kind of disengaged from the political conversation. I saw how volatile it gotten. So after after October, I took a vow. I said I will not be posting on anything political. I think I may have put out a couple of things uh, as specifically Pizzagate rolled out and the Podesta affair, largely because I didn't view them as pol directly political so much as part of the conversation that I have in in my working on this sh on on my show what was your take which has on to that? do with this it's um that's not political anymore that's actually hard hard comping of of facts yeah what was your take on pizzagate uh, at the end of the day looking at it um whether we can vet the data or not, I think the Pizzagate meme itself trivialized something that's far bigger and far scarier um, because it leaked into mainstream news. It then was able to be marginalized, which removed it from a valid discussion that the American people need to have about the trafficking of children and the satanic ritual abuse that occurs in the, at the highest quarters of power. That was the conversation that didn't occur. Instead, it got marginalized as another scandal, and we segued directly into, oh, the Russians are screwing with our elections. Thank you so much, and I completely agree. And, folks, we will have Kathy O'Brien on here to talk about that very thing. I mean, 25 years of data that is, is there for you to understand about the nefarious acts of these horrendous child trafficking pedophiles that practice satanic mind control ritual abuse on children is so rampant and so large to have it all just myopically focused on Oliphantus and say Pizzagate and have it as people don't understand when we start to complain about the fact that it did get traction in the media we're always contrary to the media folks if it's out there like that then it's propaganda yeah, yeah. it's meant to distract and disturb and then yes you know uh this is this is a, this is a subject that i am absolutely passionate about and i live here in the heart of penn state country i i watched the entire Penn State, Joe Paterno, Jer Jerry Sandusky unfold. It's right in my backyard. I live right in the capital of, of Pennsylvania. I can tell you that 20 years ago, the FBI field office in Harrisburg had information then related to child trafficking between Penn State and the state capital and that they never acted on it. There were reporters that knew what was going on with the um, the Sandusky affair, what was being covered up, the, the the quarters of power were child trafficking. With, trafficking was very common. This was wink, wink. We just keep going. There was a state legislature who was found, let's just say, um, very dead in a um, wooded section north of the city that was directly relatable to child prostitution rings running through the state capitol. Numerous reporters, there was also a very dead district attorney whose briefcase was found in the river. His body was never found in, in Luzerne County, Pennsylvania, who was investigating Penn State as well. The cover-up for this is at the highest levels of power, and they will do everything they can to trivialize this because, and I've said this many times on my show, this is how business gets done by the elites. This is a ritual, this is a rite, this is sacred to them, their ability to traffic, abuse, sexually molest, and otherwise abuse children. 
Yeah, folks, the people that want power, you don't want in power. That's just the truth That's of That's exactly it. right, yeah. Well, let's take this then to the other side of our spectrum and flip the coin, the old Trump coin, gold-plated <laughs> silver, <laughs> uh, and look at our planet from yet another perspective. So we've got all of this political shenanigans, identity politics, and and high strangeness, conspiracy, not to mention even high-profile satanic ritual abuse uh, going on. But now we have the CIA releasing what are known as the Crest documents, and many things about UFOs, remote viewing, psychics mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. Uri Geller are yep. coming to the surface. Meanwhile, for Alex Jones to bring him back into this, for his New Year's celebration at the stroke of midnight, was discussing how he was certain that alien panspermia is what brought life to planet Earth and that the elite actually follow the, the, the movie plot of Prometheus, aliens, Prometheus, and the new one coming out, Covenant. Now, I was blown away that that was Alex Jones's midnight statement. As the stroke of midnight hit in Texas, he's talking about alien panspermia. Now we've got these UFO documents. We've got you know, how do, uh, 15 million CIA documents released to the public that we're all going to be scurrying through to see what we can find. They're even set up for searching, um, so if you know what you're after. But yeah, so now we've got this other side of our puzzle. Is it time for the alien invasion? Have the Jesuits stood in the place? What do you think about these documents or anything to deal with this alien panspermia idea? I, mean, I downloaded some of the documents. So I have a partial, por partial trove here of some of the documents that I started to go through, uh, specifically those related to the remote viewing projects out at Stanford. Um, I, as these things get called through, I think the best data is going to be what gets mined out of this. Um, some very good researchers out there may be able to pull some nuggets out of it. It's not user-friendly. Um, it is indexed. It is now being made retrievable, and it is now being reformatted into PDF. you do have to go to CIA.gov. <laughs> and you do. Yeah, um, but actually that will change very quickly as people begin to pull the documents down. The CIA very deliberately made these documents as difficult as possible to navigate. Um, I'm quite certain this was a raw dump. It didn't include their indexes and their master database tables that would enable you to do the type of high-end searching that, that they're using because they're use, obviously using very sophisticated heuristics in their software. But... Um, what this does is it places onto the public record, uh, the, the, if nothing else, if not the factual data, at least the, the level of intensity our own government has placed into the paranormal aspects of our existence. I mean, even if you just validate Stanford Research Center and what was going on out there with the remote viewing and you begin to look at the die. I enjoyed reading the parts about Ingo Swan and um, Yuri Geller. And Project because Stargate. Project Stargate, yeah. Um, but it shows you that either our government's just completely pissing our money away or there was really something there. Well, the truth, the truth of the matter is they understand more about the stream of reality we live in than we do. We've been kept blind, ignorant, and dumb about the nature of our own reality and our own existence while our government has exploited our own metaphysical aspects against us. Let's not forget, folks, the CIA was formed in the tomb of skull and bones. Magic practices, secret rituals, uh, even crazy masturbation in coffins uh, going on by your leaders openly. We know all of this. It's been in major press. It's, you know, it's not hidden, but people forget this is where the CIA boils up, just like the Nazi party coming up out of a psychical research group. Now, to bring this straight into modern times as well, Uri Geller was running around with Michael Jackson trying to find a clone so that they could transfer their soul into this other body. I mean, the time of transhumanism is well upon us, and we are going to cover that quite heavily this year as well. Yeah, the, the whole agenda there. I mean, it's very difficult right now for people to understand 
when we talk about clone clones, when we talk about uh, I brought this up in several panels I was on during the election, the fact that I felt very strongly. Yeah, I mean, very little doubt in my mind that the Hillary Clintons we saw cavorting around out there were at at the very least body doubles, which I think we were able to document at least three body doubles. But, you know, when I said to people, it's entirely possible that she's been cloned, people's jaws dropped because they don't understand how far the technology really is relative to what the perceptual level is in the public. So when you say clones, they're thinking um, Dolly, the the sheep, and that's as far as they can go. We're, we're doing cell cloning. They don't understand the technology exists right now for them to, and it's actually a very simple process, duplicate a human being just like a freaking Xerox machine. Yeah, realize, folks, that a clone is is best ex- described as a, a identical twin born years later. So it's not the same person. It is the identical twin and just born out of the womb or separate from the other birth, you know. So, yeah, I mean, OK, again, the media giving us the hype and, and the non-hype. Whenever you hear about cloning, you will hear the name Dr. Hoang Sook. And he is the disgraced cloner who claimed to have cloned humans and has then come forward saying, no, that was that was not true. But actually, he is still saying, yes, absolutely, I cloned. But he was disgraced in the public eye, and he is the name that they will toss out every single mm-hmm. time they talk about mm-hmm. human cloning. Disgraced Dr. Hwang Suk, the guy who faked human cloning. Meanwhile... He is building a massive cloning lab to to produce million cows a year for your dining pleasure, and he has clone your pet and and will bring back your your lovely animal for a mere hundred thousand uh, dollars. This technology's happening, folks. It's not coming. It's it's happening, right? Yeah, the, you know we're back again to disclosure. And the whole ET thing. And I know that people are looking for what, what's called uh, capital D disclosure. The truth of the matter is that I think once people begin to mine through the uh, data dump on this, they're going to realize we've had disclosure for a long time. It's been in the skies above us. And quite frankly, you know, the part that people really can, can't grasp because of the Hollywood stereotypes is that you've had. You had extraterrestrial um, aliens, other beings walking among you, unbeknownst to you, all of your life. And then that's real uncomfortable for people to fathom. That, as um, it was Bob Dean told me one time, they walk the corridors of the Pentagon. I have been told this, folks. Uh, you know, I had... I had a friend of a friend who, or a friend who, who was friends with the head of strategic air command, used to golf with them, and jokingly brought up the, the extraterrestrial question. He said the guy went stone faced. Said they're here. There's nothing we can do about it. Don't ever bring it up again. Yeah. And now we're getting the documents released. We're going. Yeah, we're not going to get that capital D disclosure because there's so much more to this. When you realize that people like Uri Geller or the the Nazi party uh, are utilizing ritual magic, like the movie Contact, or even if you want to go to technology that is being used to transmit your mind and your soul into other dimensions and into other computers and things of that nature, uh, the ideas that came through the movie Contact, and yeah. the idea that we're psychically linked with extraterrestrial races, and the more and more you look into secret societies, you'll find that there is this whole connection, the OTO and the Typhonian order. Uh, their whole gig is to make contact with otherworldly beings. Well, that's exactly what um, what Jack Parsons and L. Ron Hubbard were doing out at uh, Palomar when they did the uh, – the ritual in 1947. They, that was <laughs> These the guys were laying nukes, folks. I just the, 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 you know this is Jack Parsons. He founded Jet Propulsion Laboratories. Uh, this was NASA before there was NASA, and yet they were doing the Moonchild ritual. Uh, you know, under the influence of Aleister Crowley, and the, to even you know you go into Crowley, you've got to understand something, and this is this is difficult too. 
Uh, Crowley may have died in 1947. Crowley's a soul jumper. So Crowley's presence is, is ever in our current experience because of who he is and what he does. And, you know, the, I always found it really strange and creepy what was going on with, with Jack Parsons and, and L. Ron Hubbard and how huge NASA became and how in, embedded Scientology has become in our lives through the world of entertainment specifically. Well, most people don't understand how deeply embedded Scientology is. Without a doubt. And if there ever was an extraterrestrial cult out there, well, they admit that. Of uh, course they do, yes. Yeah. That's, you know, that's it. Them and the Mormons, right? Right, uh, yeah. And now we have Trump appointing Elon Musk as his head advisor for you know our future tech. And, oh, my God, you know, talk, it, folks, it, it, it appears to me, and, and Randy, I, I wonder if you have a comment on this, that transhumanism is inevitable. We are not going to escape this. It's going to happen. We are going to be having augmented reality. It's going to start with glasses. It's going to work its way into our brain. And there are going to be augmented people on this planet. What do you say? No, I'm on record with that, Freeman. I, you know, when the Pokemon Go thing was, was all the, all the uh, rage this summer, I, I was invited to speak on a couple of radio shows and, uh, I pointed out to them then that the Pokemon Go thing was a very novel way of introducing people into interacting with their devices as a means of navigating three-dimensional landscape, which is the next step is basically to place your consciousness inside of a machine and traverse three-dimensional space, fourth-dimensional space, and even 5D by being inside of a silicon wafer. So, I mean, you know, that's it's... It's it's the unstated agenda that sat there for a long time. It's the ideal goal, and it is a soul trap. You know, if we allow this to go forward, if we allow ourselves to be enslaved by these devices, which are recontouring our minds constantly through uh, the frequencies that we are operating with, we will reduce ourselves from the holy trinity that we are, which is, you know, body, spirit, and soul into a binary unit. I mean, I can't think of anything more insidious than that, but that's the trajectory that I see in the transhumanist uh, agenda. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. It, it would, fr uh, no, uh-uh. <laughs> you know, I just have too much of a connection with the universe to, to put myself in there. You know, are you saved to the cloud, my friend? Oh, and <laughs> have you backed up today? Yeah, it's all coming too. We've got magic leap technology bringing in these augmented reality glasses that will transmit messages or uh, images directly to your retina using mm -hmm. nano laser technology. We've got hollow lens coming out ready to augment your reality, trying to beat out magic lens. We'll see who or magic leap and we'll see uh, who wins out in that. But it is absolutely about to transform all of our realities. And then we're now we're stuck with a smart reality. We're moving into the time of UN resolutions of uh, human habitat zones. We're going to have smart houses that are telling us what we can eat, what we can wear, how far we can go and what we can do. And it's always going to be reporting back to Alexa or Siri or, uh, you know, right? Yeah, I mean, look, you know, there's a reason why Facebook bought Oculus and why they are being very guarded right now about their plans for it. You have Oculus, Google Glass, which failed. They don't really care at the top. Um, <clears throat> Facebook, Google are all funded by the CIA, which is one giant super corporation. There's something nobody talks about. Right. The fact that the CIA is a law unto itself because it's a super corporation. Absolutely. I was watching the Zuckerberg movie to see how Mark got his startup money to get this thing going, you know, uh, because that's what I do. I want to know. I want to learn. And you watch that entire movie and it just skips over a mysterious envelope of money just ends up with him. And it's never actually commented on in the movie, except for that. Suddenly he has the money to do all the things he needs to do. Right. Well, isn't it interesting that Google Google is sitting under the umbrella of a company called a Alphabet, which when I saw wow. that, I went, now that's just too creepy. I mean, the Alphabet Agency, CIA, how 
open are they being about who they really are? Don't and when be. you begin to look at Eric Schmidt and you look at the people that sit on the boards of these corporations, cross-pollinated between all the tech corporations, YouTube, Facebook, Apple, all of them are basically hatched under one mushroom and they are just launching out all of these little pilot projects because it's cool, it's trendy, it's fun. Hey, we can go to Starbucks. Look at me. I've got my Apple Watch. Oh, look at that. And see, that's what people are doing. They're giving their consciousness and their sovereignty over to devices without even realizing the cost of this to their to their organic consciousness. Absolutely. And you are not hearing anyone at all freaking out that Lord G, that's what we call Google around here, uh, Lord G uh, has bought the Boston Dynamics killer robots. They have bought the AI technology. They have bought the quantum computer, uh, D-Wave, and they have the largest right. DNA yeah. database in their Calico division. I mean, Lord G, old, you know, Mr. Google, don't be evil, is Skynet. And Arnold Schwarzenegger is working on being our next president. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is, uh, this is dystopia at its finest. Why isn't anybody talking about Google in this way? Uh, you know, do you know all this, right? You know, the killer Very robots and AI. And no, I've, been, well, I've been warning about Google for years. And, and having said that, they're so thoroughly embedded in everything that um, – you know, I don't have an easy answer for this, except you yeah. just pull the damn plug. I mean, how do we do what we do without the technology, the backplane that exists? Um, some have suggested, and I have agreed, that the day is coming when we may be forced to disconnect ethically. And where do we go from there? Do we go back to shortwave radio? Oh, God forbid that. That was a nightmare. Ham radios. I mean, do we go to the dark web? The, there's an option. Do we set up ad hoc Wi-Fi networks? You know, are, these are all things we, as, you know, conscious people operating in, in this alternative media realm need to examine. And we also need to look at how deeply embedded we are in their system right now. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, my world doesn't work without Google. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sure there'll be another way. And like I was saying, folks, I'm trying to get into that television studio. So uh, now is the time to subscribe. This year is the oh, perfect time. It's yes. perfect time. Absolutely. Support anybody out there that, that you like and you enjoy that's doing ethical work in the alternative media. We're going to be doing some of that ourselves this year, kind of launching out into some new projects. Um <sighs> Jeez, I just had a brain freeze myself, Freeman. What okay, well, I'll just uh, double that and say, <laughs> guys, yeah, if you take five bucks, 20 bucks a month, and give it out five bucks at a time at your favorite hosts, you know, it's it's really nothing to give five dollars, but it builds. I mean, there are tens of thousands of you. If all of you right now subscribe to freemantv.com, I could go buy a house, <laughs> but you know, I'm not expecting that type of return. Uh, but there are thirty thousand plus of you listening at this moment. You know, imagine if you all just subscribe for a single month, I would be out. You know, making sure everything was going good and it would it would be nothing to you you'd forget all about that month that you spent seven dollars on me and or on randy moggins uh, go to off planet and you know drop do you have a donate button there yeah there's a yeah there's a paypal button there yeah yep. i mean it's 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 been made so simple through our ai technologies like paypal that are just skimming so much money out of there uh, oh god there's the next thing we've got to figure out alternative banking have you ever noticed how when you go to paypal you yeah. gotta hit continue to submit every time you go get your money continue submit mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah submit isn't that interesting submit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So sneaky. So do it. Uh, subscribe up now to Freeman TV. Do it. Yeah, folks, it's worth it. And it's going to be epic this year. And I'm, I'm so happy to talk with people like Randy Moggins that have a wide view. I'm going to actually bring a number of different podcasters on. Got Clyde Lewis, got Jimmy Church, uh, coming on to get these wide angle views of all of this. Cause Randy, uh, you go over so many topics that, you know, you're just constantly bombarded by new data. It's like you are studying to be a professor every week to get up the, the data you need to get out here and, and share with the people because, you know, that's what it takes, right?
That's that's it. That's it. That's what we're doing. It's a lot of work, folks, but it's it's really worth it. I never thought I would be doing this, Randy. Uh, did you stumble into to making your podcast? How'd that happen? I'm an accidental broadcaster. Actually, I've been doing this since I was a teenager, uh, right. in some form or another. But yeah, I mean, winding up doing what we're doing now. Pfft, Absolutely. This was just me swerving into something and, and going, well, I guess this is how we do it. This is how we roll. Yep. Yep. That's me too. A bunch of synchronistic events just came together to plant me in front of you. Uh, but I think we are the perfect receptacles of this information. We're able to take it in and, and, and bring it back out without the hate, without the anger, without the fear, and try to shift the consciousness, which is really my goal this year, is to shift our consciousness as to what we expect out of life and how we can truly feel at ease in existence. And, uh, you know, this comes down to such primitive nature, Randy, the ideas of food, shelter, and water, that comfort with nurture uh, and beauty. You know, these are the things that need to be focused on. What are your words as we close, uh, close out this first hour? Yeah, no, all of that. Uh, we need to stay close to the organic. We need to go deeply inside of ourselves because that's where the real game is. The real game is that you are generating your reality moment by moment when you shift your focus and get more deeply embedded in a reality that you generate rather than what the world matrix is putting on you, then you're in a position to start to spin things around, and it doesn't matter if 10,000 people are against you. Now, here's the truth. When, when the Russian economy had collapsed, uh, the poor folk hardly noticed at all. That's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Those, those best positioned to survive are those who are living closest to the ground. There you go. So, folks, uh, you know, this whole thing is rumbling and stirring right now, and uh, the inauguration is going to hit a high mark tomorrow as things unfold. I hope I get this show out to you right away. I'm going to try and get it all done and get out to you right away. Um, remember that that humanity is humanity, and no matter how much the – Media has spun us as these evil creatures existing on planet Earth. My experience does not show me this. And I have met so many people and I watch so many people around the world. We are now globally communicative and we're seeing life all over the planet. And I see an abundance of amazing, beautiful, wonderful human beings out there. So if all this mental shenanigans run by this horrible cabal of satanic pedophile abusers suddenly falls in and collapses all on itself in their crying tradition tradition oh we know that we can get close to the ground we can turn these lawns into gardens we can start to eat and have a great time and what you're going to find is that your soul will finally be at ease and and the whole planet could shift through this consciousness change as we realize when the CIA is giving us these crest documents showing the interconnectivity of our psychic minds and consciousness, mm. showing us all of this, then we know that it's all up in our heads. So, Randy, any problem? Nothing there, man. Amen, brother. All right. Amen. All so, right. Randy Moggins, he is the host of Off Planet Radio. You will find this at offplanetradio.com. And like we say, you know, just this time, kick all your favorite hosts, five bucks. And if you all do it, it really would make a huge difference. And we'll, we'll take over the consciousness and the topics and the talk. We'll take this to where it needs to go. So thank you all so much for tuning in. Thank you, Randy, for coming on. Thank you, Freeman. And we will all see you all next week. And members, I'll see you over there at the members section. And we'll get deeper and deeper into this reality matrix with Randy Moore.